picture this. It's the early 70s, right? And it was my mother, myself, my younger sister, my younger brother and younger sister. Uh, we had, didn't go to the movies a lot, but there was a movie that came out in the early 70s that my mother really wanted to see. We were seeing TV commercials about it, right? So the movie was called Jaws. And it, she was very excited to go see it because we didn't go to, we were very poor and we didn't go to the movies a lot. Uh, so she, she took us enough, she had enough money to take us to see this movie just to get us out of the house and let us have experience this. Now, of course, uh, in hindsight, Jaws is a kind of traumatic, uh, it's kind of a very strong movie for, for young kids uh, with all the, you know, the carnage and everything going on. You know the movie. But uh, I remember being in my bed late at night, that, the night that we, after we saw the movie, and seeing a shark come through my door as I'm laying under the covers, looking at the hallway, the dark hallway, just, I can just imagine a shark swimming through the darkness. And I knew it was just imagination, but it was still, it's an imagination, it's an imagery ref, that reflected my a sense, a little, little bit of a sense of fear that I was having, right? But it was exciting, right? Because I got to see a really good movie and it still remains one of my favorite movies. But here's what I really got from that. I remember seeing the poster for Jaws, the, the, the movie poster, and I automatically, it's almost like I just automatically was able to see it on different levels beyond what the obvious imagery was reflecting. I was looking at, uh, you know, the, 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 the woman swimming on top of the water and the shark coming up to get her, right? And I instantly saw the depths of some physiological reasoning behind the construction of that poster. And it was my very first time that I was able to see these, this burgeoning arch, archetype that I was already previously starting to understand from looking at nature, being out in the woods and studying nature for, from, from, from a very young age. Uh, I remember discovering these archetypes. I, didn't, I had never heard of the word. I just saw that these patterns were reflected in different natural occurrences, natural objects, natural things. And I started to piece together why this was uh, this was this, this this was true. And not only was I able to see certain archetypes in nature, I was also able, based on what their archetype was, to find the opposite archetype. And I had to prove that by uh, by finding things that human beings created that reflected a very similar function that was reflected in nature. If something was in nature was meant to repel you, then visually, the things that human beings create that are meant to repel you will match to a certain degree. I was able to start to see some of this, some of this occur. Some of the things that human beings that create, human beings create that are meant to attract you, that is also evident in nature as well. And I was able to put that somehow. I was able to put that together in my in my mind and say, Wow. Wow, there's, it says there's something hidden in that. So later when I saw the Jaws movie poster, I was able to instantly not only see the imagery and, oh, it was a shark swimming from the depths to go grab this swimmer on the surface of the water. I was able to see and sense a lot of the hidden archi architecture or structure of what that poster was reflecting. And that really excited me beyond measure about what I had seen. That was the first time that I was, one of the first times that I clearly started to see, wow, the visual things that humans create are reflected in, in, in the natural world. Wow, so that put me on a pursuit, on a pursuit to try to see all the things that human beings create, how, what is their, uh, natural counterpart what is the natural root of it you know that humans observe or discover try to mimic and capture and put it in uh the things that we create and one of the things that you create is art and art is full of prime examples 
of how these archetypal uh, natural occurrences have a physiological effect on perception and how we uh, understand the things that we are seeing. So let's look at for all my videos from now on. They will be, we would, I will give a brief introduction and talk about the genesis of the idea of the subject of the video. But then we're going to dive into the subject of the video and analyze it and break it down, give a visual overview of what's reflected metaphysically and how it in this art work of art and how it affects you physiologically. The, the, how uh, the mechanisms used in this work of art to affect you metaphysically and consciously as well. So without further ado, let's break down that my all-time favorite movie poster from the movie Jaws. Let's analyze it and see what I was, I mean, try to t share with you what I was seeing when I first saw that poster and some of the things that I've learned since then. All right, stay tuned. Okay. Here is the legendary uh, book cover for the movie, uh, for the novel Jaws, and which also served as the movie poster for the for the movie Jaws. It came out uh, 40 years ago. Uh, the movie was directed by Steven Spielberg, and my mother took us to take it, and it scared the hell out of us, at least me. And but but like I said earlier, it, it was the movie poster that left a really different impression on me uh, it was simple as you can see it's very simple but it's very elegant and I was just captivated by the power uh, of the imagery it's the, the power of the imagery is just terrifying and I wondered you know how did this how why is this thing so terrifying to me and but yet why does it seem so beautiful to me and I put that together with the fact that I had already been thinking about archetypes and I was seeing all kind of other types of uh, what I would consider visual iconography in this poster. So let's uh, take a look at it and, uh, and break it down. Again, the, the creator was Roger Castle. It's for the uh, book cover of Jaws and served as the movie poster. Uh, and this, uh, I consider it my favorite graphical arts uh posters ever you know it's, it's uh, captivated me very strongly when i was young for multiple reasons and i like to explain some of those reasons what i was some of the things that i was seeing all right uh so let's break it down the visual structure of it and talk about the the natural effects that uh this poster has on physiologically and uh sensory the effects that it has on it had on me rather so uh, let me go in and dim this background so get a better view of it first things first let's look at the proportion proportion wise uh, it follows the golden means ratio so if I go and I go to the golden means ratio and open that up, you will see that it's very close to the perfect proportions. Now, the bottom of the title, Jaws, ends right at this level here. Uh, I don't know what that is called, but it fits into this golden mean ratio perfectly right and the center the center line here is right where the horizontal uh, top of the water crosses so this poster obviously was designed to have a golden mean ratio and I always wondered why you know there was so much water why wasn't the top opened up and I've seen the different versions of this like in some versions there are clouds and everything but I like this simplistic version at the top with the red lettering and just the white background and but I, and I always theorize I always thought that you know something about the proportion and it was a little bit later when I just when I found out about the golden means ratio and I just wow I wonder if Charles poster 
the movie poster Jaws fits that golden means because I, from my memory, I think it did because that was one of the things I was wondering why he, why the artist positioned this, uh, gave it this amount of proportion. I always wondered about that. What about the, why did he use this space here? All this space. And, and I went and I did an overlay of the golden means and I laid it, uh, laid across the poster and it fit perfectly just as I would assume it would have as you can see here so this movie this poster reflects uh, the golden means proportion the golden means ratio which is a a, a naturally occurring d dynamic ratio of beauty uh, a naturally occurring numerical version a, a, a numerical structure of, of reality of, phys of physical reality and the artist was very very uh, intelligent enough and wise enough to incorporate that in, in his posters and all future artists that's one of the things that you could try to strive for is to take things that are built in nature and reflect them you can hide them you don't have to be so obvious you can be subtle just as the uh, mr castle was subtle in this poster and use things that automatically have a it really do have a physiological effect on you we this proportion uh registers with our subconscious and our physiological state and gives us a sense a certain sense uh a sense of perfection actually so that is one element that i've always wondered about and i was able to figure out i was able to actually find uh you know what that meant and i once I found the golden means ratio and I laid it over the top of the poster, I really, then I understood the, the level of insight put into this, this very, very simple poster. And there are other things that we're going to discuss here. Like I say, this horizontal line here, uh, one thing that horizontal lines do, when you see a horizontal line, it gives you a sense of stability visually. It gives you a sense of stability. So a straight line across is very, very stable as opposed to diagonals or curves or anything like that. But uh, horizontal lines give you a sense of stability. Also, look at the placement of it. It is placed very high, like I said, on, on this golden means ratio. Very high. And that means that uh, the majority of the space being used in this poster fills out this environment. You see, this poster is an environment all into itself. It is a reality, all in, it is a visual reality all into itself. And whatsoever dominates that visual reality, that is what that is the feeling or the perception that you're gonna get from that. And look at how much space this takes up. So, Whatever this space is reflecting or expressing, that's going to be the overwhelming impression or reflect re, what uh, expression in this reality, in this uh, in this post, in, in the reality of this poster. But to contrast that, you have this other opposing space, which is very calm and neutral, and nothing's going on other than the title. And then you have this color, this blue. This color here. So let's go on and look at some other elements. One thing that I realized when I was young is I started to discover archetypes of angles. And as you can see that this shark is a shape of an angle. Now, if I did not, if I had never seen a shark before in my life or did not know what a shark was, I would know that a shark was dangerous knowing what I know now, knowing what I knew growing up, I would know that it was dangerous because it is nothing, a shark is nothing but angles. And the way that Mr. Castle used it in his poster, you have this piercing, almost spear-like angle coming from the bottom, uh, breaking the bottom surface and it's moving upward and about to break this peaceful horizontal line. So you have this peaceful horizontal line and this sharp angle being thrust upward about to 
shatter this peaceful, shatter the peacefulness of this scene up here at the top. Now, if you look at the swimmer, the swimmer has a lot of angles, has a, has a couple of angles that are very interesting. And I always wondered about like, okay, that's a, of course she's swimming, but that reminded me of something else. And let me show you what it reminded me of. It reminded me of, bam, another shark. And I overlay the shark over the swimmer and you almost get an exact other shark with her, with her, uh, this leg kind of is in the position of the fin of, of a shark and her other arm is at the position of the dorsal, dorsal fin of the shark. So, the, this repetitive nature about this poster where this female, this swimmer, is very reminiscent of a shark. The, 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 the physique of a shark, actually. So you have this kind of uh, double threat. Of course, we're not going to automatically register that that's a shark. We're going to think that it's just a person swimming. But subconsciously, uh, I think the artist was trying to influence you subconsciously by implying movement and lending to the overall dangerous feel of the angles by lending the swimmer certain angles that are very reminiscent of a shark. Very much like a shark. And I was very surprised when I saw that. I just saw that and said, let me put a shark over that. I had the intuition that this, that it would match and it matched almost perfectly as you can see. Let's look at some of the other visual elements. Let's look at uh, the, the grayscale. I put a grayscale in here so you can see that it goes from white to black or from light to dark, from light to dark. And because I'm sure I've, I've seen some other posters, other variations of, of this poster where the water was much darker and the shark was emerging from the darkness, much more terrifying than emerging from the, from the light. But uh, the dark is almost very, dark is like night, is very mysterious because we, our senses are very limited. The sense of sight is very limited when it comes to the murky depths of the ocean and the night. So that in itself lends itself, that itself leans toward more uh, a menacing, fearful state of mind. And physi physiologically, we read uh, darkness and obscurity as something to be afraid of. Let's also look at a couple of other things here. And look at the angles, the teeth. I want you to take a look at the teeth. When I was younger, I realized that it is built into us to fear angles because of these little things right here. My aunt had a lot of rose bushes around her, around the, around the house that she liked to grow. And me being a very, very active kid, I would run around and on occasion get snagged or scratched by the thorns. And I would often look at the cactus and the thorns and other uh, wild uh, st sticking trees and vines and and wonder how did how do plants how did plants know to evolve such a mechanism that of protection it always puzzled me as a how that how how were plants able to do what I was also seeing reflected in animals I would see dogs growling and when dogs are growling, I got surrounded by a pack of junkyard dogs one time and they all were growling at me, looking just like this, showing their teeth. And I asked myself, it's like, 
How does a dog know to show you his teeth? How does a dog know to warn you by showing you his teeth? Look at these angles that I'm showing you. These angles will, pen will penetrate you when I bite you. But I'm warning you now. Along with that, look at the angles. Along with that, when I would see angry people or uh, growling animals, I would also look at the angles in their face. Look at the angles in the, in, in the human face when he's angry. Forms a lot of angles, just like you would see in all animals. So there is this type of hidden language, this type of hidden, I guess, for lack of a better term, iconography or uh, or archetype that all mammals or any kind of social creature recognize. All mammals recognize this. That's why you see it all mammals. You don't see it so much in reptiles, but you do see it in reptiles to a degree, but you see it in all mammals, definitely. Mammals are meant to read angles a certain way. That is why we read this as anger. We read this as a warning. We read the showing of teeth as a warning. The, the, the squinching of the eyes as a warning. The very, very same warning that a tiger may give you. The very, very same warning that an angry dog would express to you as well. So that is reflected in this poster. By showing you uh, all these rows of uh, jagged, really pointy teeth, right? Emerging from the blackness of the mouth, right? So it's very terrifying, right? So let's look at some other elements of this poster. I showed you the golden mean. Let's look at the color scale, of course. It, uh, this poster. Uh, has a very limited color scheme and it's very simple but it goes from cold colors to hot colors and it only uses a couple of colors very very simple color scheme uh, to match the simplicity of the layout of the design but it's perfect because it goes from a muddy milk uh, muttered kind of uh, low intensity blue a shade of blue or a tint of blue right which is here all the way to red to a, to a, the hot red of this logo so it's a very limited color scheme but it's very effective so it goes from dark to light and it also goes from cold to hot right and I thought that that's a very good contrast of a uh, simple contrast but it's very effective elements to be to use and that is one that is the reason why i really love this poster is because i was able to like really understand uh what i was looking at although i was a child and hadn't quite learned all the academic uh nomenclature and the language to describe what i was seeing i had a basic very, very, no, I had a very good understanding of archetypal visual understanding because I was a very visual child and I was able to see patterns very, very well. And I saw the patterns in the, represented in this poster, I had seen them countless times in nature, so that's why I was able to read this poster so easily, right? And it went on to become my favorite poster because it exemplified and really verified what I was learning. It verified what I was learning and I was very, very happy that it did so because I wasn't quite sure when I was a kid that what I was seeing was really legit. But when this, when this poster came out, it was the fir very first instance. Of course, I've had the many, many, many more instances where I've uh, been verified. My knowledge of it, my understanding was verified but this was the very first and I was very very young so I wanted to share that with you this is my favorite movie poster and it's uh it was the beginning of my understanding of what the true meaning and true power of art uh true power that art has on people and of course Jaws went on to become a very very successful movie and this poster has went on to become 
very iconic. So thank, thank you. you. And I hope you come back for another ep- edition where we will, I will find another work of art or maybe uh, an ancient work of art and we'll work our way up to the modern art. But I wanted to start with this uh, poster because it is like the very, very beginnings of my understandings of art. Thank you.